Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks by Calcine TV. Sage, your host here. Our guest today, Thomas Hanley. He's the Managing Director and CEO of Singular Health Limited. For some background, Singular Health Group is a medical technology company that delivers personalised surgical planning and design solutions for better health outcomes. So here to tell us more about what they do is a Managing Director himself as well as CEO Thomas Hanley. Welcome to the show, Thomas. Good morning, Sage, and uh, good morning to your viewers. We're so glad to have you with us. We'd love to find out more about how Singular Health's 25% owned additive engineering has commissioned its manufacturing facility in Melbourne. How significant is this update for the company and its investors, please? Uh, well, great question. Um, I guess to understand the significance of the, of the um, uh, commissioning of the plant, you have to understand a little bit more about our software. So inherently, what our software does is take a CT scan, which is made up of hundreds and sometimes many hundreds of slices, combines that together to create a 3D volume rendered image of that particular body part. And, and recently, we've been focusing a lot on the cranium. So that's sort of this part of the head right up to here. So imagine, for, if you will, taking a CT scan, looking at those individual slices and having a piece of software that combines those slices together to create a, a, a 3D and virtual reality image of that. We then take our software to then what we do, segment that. So we take the, bone, the, the, the skeletal structure of the, the cranium and the, and the head, and we basically segment that into what we call an STL or CAD file. So it's a computer-aided design file. And once you're able to do that, you, you're able to sort of look at the body in, in various sort of components. And this here, for example, is a jaw. So instead of looking at this as a generic jaw or, you know, someone else's jaw, which a surgeon can then practice on, this is actually the jaw that's been segmented from someone's CT scan. And everyone's jaw is different. Everyone's head's different. Um, so this gives the opportunity uh, for us to then send these images to our 3D printing facility in Melbourne and they can then 3D print what we call biomodels. So this is a biomodel printed in plastic or nylon, and this is used for a surgeon to then look at the type of surgery they're about to perform. So in this particular case, you'll see that this is a, um, uh, a, 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 ch uh, a chin advancement where they've cut along here and advanced the chin. And then after that, the surgeon can then look, work out where the drill holes go, work out where the cut lines go, make that um, incision, and that advancement in the surgery and then use uh, custom-made titanium implants to tie all that together. And that image that you see here, this uh, 3D printed uh, plastic model, as well as the titanium implants that bring all that together are all 3D printed from our facility or our 25% uh, stake in our facility in Melbourne. And that's what really ties our software into that sort of commercial application of surgical uh, precision um, and planning. That's fantastic. Sounds like you're assisting the surgeons to get the job done more efficiently and accurately. So how is Scan to Surgery, your trademark, revolutionising the planning and execution of these surgical procedures and improving the patient outcomes, please? Yeah, so um, again, that all ties back to our software. So um, what we started off was a premise that instead of looking and focusing a lot of uh, complicated hardware, we would use existing CT scans. They would then, so a, a patient would go to uh, an MRI or CT clinic um, traditionally. Uh, they would get a CT scan. That CT scan can then be imported into our software. As I said, created into a virtual 3D image of which the surgeon or the clinician can then look at uh, the particular procedure that they're about to commit. They can then go through and segment that and then practice that procedure, whether in virtual reality or uh, in 3D. Um, work out the implants, work, work through the process of, of just how um, accurate the surgery is going to be and then design the implants through the software and then export that to the facility in Melbourne. They will then print out the bio models for practice um, and the implants and that will then go straight to the surgeon. So it really sort of creates an entire vertical uh, process around uh, our application and our software from the point where the, the surgeon or the, or the patient gets their CT scan all the way to the process of actually making that first incision. 
Well, that sounds great. I mean, this is really putting Australia at the forefront of advanced manufacturing and growth, which is fantastic to hear. And last quarter, the company worked with a group of strategic investors to establish a sales and marketing joint venture in Macau. How are things progressing at this end? Uh, look, they're progressing pretty well. Um, obviously, China has had a, uh, a lockdown or an ongoing lockdown uh, with COVID. But in doing so, we've been able to work with um, a surgical team and some salespeople in Macau, and we're about to release the software for their first initial trials with one or two hospitals in that smaller sort of provincial area of China before we then look to release that into uh, the greater mainland China area. So what's really interesting about that particular market is that, uh, um, is that the number of CT scans sort of uh, in the millions and millions. Um, and more and more so, people are asking for that sort of really precise, accurate type of surgery. And it's, it's a growth area, not just in places like China, but also in South Korea, Japan, um, Australia, Europe, the United States. So uh, it is really a, 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 a potential market for us that we can see a lot of upside. That's fantastic. It's great to hear that technology is advancing to help not only the physicians and the surgeons, but also the people going through the therapy who need mm. to get accustomed to the, the quite um, sterile and, and cold atmosphere that comes with getting the precision required. So on that note, what is Singular Health's growth strategy for the US and European geographies as well? Excellent question. So we've just gone through, um, we're about to do our final ISO 13485. That's the quality management system for uh, medical technology uh, globally. Um, as we're doing that, we've actually made our first, uh, about to make our first application for 510K FDA approval for our software called um, 3DICOM MD. And 3DICOM MD is part of our suite of software. So our software uh, comes in five flavors, if you would. We've got uh, 3DICOM Patient, and that allows um, individual patients to request the CT scans, upload their CT scans into a computer, and then look at their images in 3D. Um, and what we find by doing that is it enables patients to get a better understanding of the particular prognosis uh, or diagnosis they're going through. So um, whether that's looking at a tumor um, or looking at uh, a broken bone or a fracture, Seeing that in 3D is a lot easier to understand than looking at those individual slices. That software is available now. Um, 3DICOM R&D is our next uh, software application. Again, that's used at universities, um, researchers, students, etc., to again, understand uh, looking at those CT scans, practice some artificial intelligence tools with, that comes with it. Um, and then we have our certified product, 3DICOM MD and 3DICOM Surgical, and those are going through their FDA process over the next 12 months. Uh, which will then allow us to work with some of the partners that we've been working with in the United States, particularly around cranial implants. Um, I, not, um, earlier, we did a project with a CSIRO to generate, to create an artificial intelligence tool that would automatically generate uh, a cranial implant uh, in about three minutes uh, from a design point of view and send that to the 3D printer. So all those sort of things are sort of building up to a launch probably in the... Uh, third quarter of 2023 into the US and European markets. That's fantastic to hear. Best of luck with your goals moving forward. And thank you so much for sharing your insights from what you do. It sounds like such noble work and it's obviously doing a lot of good for the industry. Uh, could you just, before you go, inform us on what the near-term goals are for Singular Health? Yes, yeah, so obviously our near-term goals are to complete uh, and get our FDA and TGA certification for our software. So that's a, a goal that a lot of the team are working on at the moment. Um, uh, that along with obviously getting uh, our, three, our um, uh, manufacturing facility in Melbourne connected through to our software so that the process becomes extremely streamlined from the point of scan to the point of surgery. Um, and then furthermore, we're looking at two or three different additional applications around being able to segment using artificial intelligence various parts of soft tissue in the body. So we're looking at particular projects at the moment where um, using artificial intelligence, and this is an area which is going to have a lot of growth in the sort of medical space going into the future, but being able to use an AI to detect things that you cannot see with the naked eye. So, so for example, early stage lung cancer um, is a really interesting area where if you use AI appropriately, it can kind of detect those areas of concern before necessarily you see them with the naked eye. And I think those are areas of interest for us going forward with our MD software 
um, which will make a real difference. Just before you go, on what you've just said there, a lot of people are getting involved with wearing wearables that are mm. recording vital signs and things like that. Does that tie into what you do? Um, look, not necessarily. Um, what we've always, we've always come from the view that when a CT scan or an MRI scan is taken, generally speaking, there's an area of interest which a particular surgeon is looking for and it ignores the rest of the CT scan, which can be about 90% of the information. So uh, being able to apply an AI, an algorithm, that can go through the rest of the scan to determine whether or not there's any other issues that that practitioner should be looking at is really sort of that key area. Um, of visualization and artificial intelligence that the company's working on. That being said, though, the ability for these wearables to sort of measure um, health outcomes um, kind of will, will then sort of, I guess, overlay that, that uh, diagnostic information and create some sort of connection between the two, which I hope that sort of data will be, will be used by other medical companies in the future. Great. Thank you so much for uh, helping us understand that better. And thank you for joining no us today, Thomas. We do appreciate your My insights. My pleasure. Thank you very and much. If you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Thomas Hanley, he's the Managing Director and CEO of Singular Health Group Limited. You can watch the full interview at Calkine Media's YouTube channel. Keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media.